Hi there, it's Dr. Golligly. Today we're going to go through the anatomy of a spondylolisthesis on an MRI scan. We're going to start over here on the left-hand image. This is what we call the sagittal image. I've labeled the bones in the lumbar spine and the sacrum. This is L2, L3, L4, L5, and S1 for the first vertebral body in the sacrum. Uh, this is what we call the sagittal view. This is as if we slice the patient in between the eyes with a laser beam. And as I click on this image and go back and forth on my um, on my arrow keys, I go from the left side to the right side of the spine. That's about the center of the spine there. I'm going to grab my arrow here so I can point out a couple of relevant uh, details. So this square, this rectangular block right here, this is the vertebral body here that I'm outlining right here like this. In between each of the blocks or the bones in the spine is the intervertebral disc. The intervertebral disc is contained by the annulus fibrosus, which shows up as a black dark signal in the front and in the back of the disc on an MRI scan. And then the center of the disc is made of a protein called the nucleus propulsus that acts as a shock absorber and as a joint. Behind the intervertebral discs is the spinal canal. The spinal canal is filled with CSF, cerebrospinal fluid, and inside the spinal canal are the individual nerve roots. So here we can see the individual nerve roots that are going through the spinal canal, and at every level they're exiting the spinal canal and going down into the legs. These intervertebral discs are pretty normal in terms of their height. At L5-S1, the disc is collapsed down, and the L5 vertebral body is slipped anteriorly with respect to S1. So L5 is traveling in that direction, and S1 is staying stable. And we know that's the case because the back of the L5 vertebral body no longer lines up with the back of S1. Now, spondylolisthesis is graded in terms of severity. So if we measure the distance that this MRI scan has traveled, it's about 25% of the overall distance of S1. So we'd make that a grade one or a grade two spondylolisthesis. If it goes about 50%, we call it a grade three. If it goes 75 to 100%, it's a grade four. And if it goes off the top, it's called an L5-S1 spondyloptosis. The area where the nerve root gets compressed is in the neuroforamen. If we click over here on this right-hand image and we scroll up and down on this image, let's go to the L4-5 level right here. So I'll grab my arrow here. This is the, the arrow is pointing at the intervertebral disc here. Behind the intervertebral disc is the spinal canal, which is this triangular shaped canal here filled with CSF, which shows up as a relatively white fluid on this scan. And inside the spinal canal are the nerve roots that go down into the legs. Here we can see the individual nerve roots. The neuroforamen is this little passageway here where the nerve root sneaks out on either side of the spine to go down into the legs. And as we scroll down to the level where the spondylolisthesis is occurring, because of the slip, it's really difficult to see the area where the neuroforamen is. But if we go back over here to the sagittal image and we go over to the side, we can appreciate the degree of neuroforaminal narrowing like this. So here's the L4-5 level. This is the neuroforamen right here. And the neuroforamen is still filled with a little bit of flat, a little bit of fat and fluid. And inside the neuroforamen is the nerve root itself. And we can clearly see the nerve root at the 3-4 level is surrounded by fluid and fat. However, at the level where the spondylolisthesis is occurring, we can't see the same neuroforamen. And the neuroforamen is completely obliterated by this chunk of disc material that's sitting right here. And by compression of the neuroforamen caused by anterior slip of L5 with respect to S1. So to appreciate that, I'm going to delete this and I'm going to draw with a pencil around the neuroforamen at the levels above. So here's the 3-4 neuroforamen, again looking like a keyhole with the nerve root being this structure inside of it, just like that. There's the 3-4 neuroforamen, there's the 4-5, sorry, there's the 2-3 neuroforamen, the 4-5 neuroforamen, and then 5-1 we can barely see right here. So really difficult to appreciate the size of the neuroforamen. And if we look at these areas, we can see that the neuroframe above measures one, at the 3-4 level, measures 1.097 square centimeters. At the 4-5 level, it measures 1.1 square centimeters, so about the same size. And then down here, it measures only 0.53 square centimeters. So it's less than 50% of the normal size of the neuroforamen caused by compression. So that's how spondylolisthesis causes neurologic compression and symptoms going down into the legs.